I wanna share an Instagram post with you. This comes from an artist who lives just about an hour from me up in Fort Collins. 32, broke, living with my parents and washing dishes for money. 42, own a business selling millions of dollars in my own art. This is a video for anybody who feels like they are behind in life. And it's also a video for anyone who feels like they are too late, that the window of opportunity has closed for them. In this video, I wanna give you two crucial reasons why it is almost certain that you are not too late to achieve your goals and why this whole feeling of being behind is in many cases, complete BS. Reason number one is that the early birds don't always win. I remember being 15 years old and trying to learn to skateboard for the first time. Specifically, I was trying to learn the kickflip and I just couldn't get it. I practiced for hours on end, but it just would not come to me. And meanwhile, all these kids who were 12, 13, 14 were easily getting it, which led me to have a thought that I'm sure you have had in the past as well. I wish I had started skateboarding when I was six years old. If I had done that now, I would have 10 years of experience under my belt or nine. I'm not so good at math when I'm recording videos and I would be basically a pro by now. I'm sure you've had that thought in the past and I'm sure you've had it for other disciplines. I've had it for guitar as well. I remember when I was learning to play bar chords, my fingers hurt so badly and I wish that I had just started playing guitar a few years earlier. So I'd be awesome now, right? And this was especially present in my mind when I started blogging and trying to build an audience. I remember being 20 years old, I had been blogging for about a year and I was really struggling to bring people to my blog. And then I found another blog being run by a kid who was just 16 years old. And not only did he have a huge audience, but he was also making over $1,000 a month in passive income. Meanwhile, I'm making no money on my blog and I'm getting eight bucks an hour to work in the IT department on campus. So I remember finding his blog and kind of kicking myself Myself, thinking like, why did I wait until I was 19 years old to start my website? I'm too late. This guy started when he was 14 years old. That's when I should have started. But now that I'm 30 years old, now that I've gone through a lot more life experience, I don't catch myself thinking this way anymore. One of the reasons for that is it kind of, if you think about it, is like a reverse wishful thinking style of procrastination. Like when we procrastinate, we put things off so our future selves have to deal with them. And this way of thinking is just like putting it off onto our past selves, except for it doesn't actually happen. In either case, we don't want our present selves to deal with the hard work required to get the results. We just want the results themselves. But the other reason I don't think this way anymore is I've realized over the years that all the other little things I've been trying to do, little experiments and offshoots, often come back and help me become even better at the main thing later on. And I am not alone in this. In fact, the book Range by David Epstein makes this its central argument. In this book, David Epstein argues that in many fields, the top performers aren't the people who started practicing when they were two years old. In fact, it's actually the people who got started a little bit later in life and spent their earlier years exploring and trying lots of different things. The tennis champion, Roger Federer, is a great example. The book talks about how he didn't get quite as early of a start as a lot of his peers, and he spent his childhood playing lots of different sports, not just tennis. But nonetheless, he came up and eventually became one of the greatest players of all time. And this happens in a lot of different fields. People do some exploring when they're younger and eventually they hone in on a field where they start to practice, start to be consistent, but they have this base of other experiences from their past that they're able to draw upon to be more creative and more adaptable than the people who only worked in that single field since they were little kids. Epstein also points out that there are two different kinds of learning environments, or maybe there's a spectrum of learning environments with two different extremes, kind and wicked learning environments. So in kind environments, feedback is almost immediate and it's usually perfect as well. In chess, for example, when you make a move, you get perfect feedback. There's almost no hidden information. Golf is also a great example, and it's worth noting that Tiger Woods is sort of the prototypical example of somebody who is a champion who started off really, really early on in their career. But most fields are not like chess or golf. Most fields are a bit more wicked. The feedback you get from them is often confusing, it's often incomplete, and the information available is also often incomplete as well. These are much more complex learning environments, and in these kinds of environments, people who have a diverse array of experiences are often much more adaptable. And I've experienced the benefits of these little experiments and diverse experiences myself. With guitar, I remember taking a bit of time off to learn piano for a little bit, and when I came back to guitar, I realized that learning piano actually changed 
changed the way that I look at the fretboard. It's actually now much easier to look at the fretboard in ways that help me to build cores. That was pretty tough for me in the past. And with business, with content creation, all these little different things I've done in the past, like dabbling with website development or dabbling with graphic design, all these different things have come and made me a better content creator overall. So if you feel like you're kind of behind in life, I think there's a better question to ask yourself, which is, am I constantly learning? Am I constantly pushing myself forward in interesting directions? Because if you are, it's very possible that what you're doing right now is going to loop back around later on and help you with the next thing. It might take a bit longer than you want it to, but it doesn't mean that you're wasting your time. Reason number two that you are probably not behind in life is that the term late is kind of relative, isn't it? See, I think a lot of the anxiety that we feel around being late or feeling behind in life is this idea that the window of opportunity has closed for us. But in many cases, that absolutely isn't true. Jimmy is a perfect example of that. 32, broke washing dishes, living with mom and dad. 42, running a successful art business, making millions of dollars. So it really, it just takes a lot of consistency and patience. Steve Carell is also a great example. He didn't get his first big break, The Office, until he was 43 years old in 2005. Before then, his career really hadn't taken off at all. And the common thread between these two people is that they were consistent and they put an effort for a very long period of time, which eventually did pay off. Jimmy has another post on his Instagram talking about how he started being serious about art all the way back when he was 20. And if you dig into Steve Carell's career, you'll find that back in the late 1980s, he was acting for a traveling children's theater troupe. So they both put in a ton of effort and they were patient and eventually it did pay off. Now, in addition to that patience and that consistency, there are two mega important habits that you need to practice in order to make sure that late doesn't turn into never for whatever it is that you want to do. The first is to simply take care of yourself because while it's true that we are all going to age, how gracefully you age is almost entirely dependent on your habits, how well you take care of yourself. We've all seen people in their 40s who look and act like they're in their 60s and vice versa. We've also seen people in their 60s who look and act much younger. They are a lot more energetic, much more exuberant, much more mentally sharp. And think about it. If the habits you adopt today day, add 10 additional happy, healthy years to your life, then what the heck does late mean anyway? If I'm going to live 10 more years because I have great health habits, that's 10 more years I can spend playing the guitar or doing whatever it is that I want to do. And in that case, late really doesn't mean anything. So seriously, try to take care of yourself. I think about this a lot more now that I'm 30 and it's going to be more and more important as I get older. And the same is true for you. Make sure you're getting eight hours of sleep a night. Make sure that you are dialing in your diet, making sure that it is balanced and ideal ideally get some exercise every day as well. The second mega important habit to practice is something called beginner's mind. This is a concept from Zen Buddhism, the way I originally read about it in a book from Mark Benioff, the CEO of salesforce.com. And essentially beginner's mind means going into new experiences and trying to drop your preconceived notions. You wanna listen actively and assume that you always have something new to learn from every new experience. And we all know people who got through school, they got their job, they get comfortable, and they sort of drop this. They kind of think that they already know everything and they become much more part hard-headed. And once you become like this, you become much less adaptable and your doors really do truly close. But people who practice beginner's mind, people who are always open to learn from new experiences and from new people, they are much more able to adapt and to learn new things and to progress all the way through their lives. So yes, it is true that you cannot get back any of the time that has already passed. None of us can do that, but it doesn't mean that you are too late. It doesn't mean that the doors of opportunity have closed on you and you would be insanely surprised at what you can do by adopting beginner's mind and practicing it for the rest of your life, by taking care of yourself and by consistently putting in effort into what it is that you wanna do for a long period of time. There's this fantastic visualization by Jack Butcher that I wanna show you here because it is very possible that you are right here at the this is pointless stage and you just need to put in a bit more effort. Now, before I go, I wanna share one of the most important skills that I've learned over the past few years as both my business and my YouTube channel have grown. And that is the skill of delegating to other people, which has classically been very difficult for me. I've always had this very DIY mindset, but I've also found it very rewarding because when I can give my work to other very talented people, that frees up my time, my energy for other more important things that I can do to grow this business. And one of the most important things that my team and I have realized for working as efficient
efficiently and as effectively as possible is that we need to document our processes. So now we have this entire knowledge base where I've created instructions on everything from how to connect to our video editing server to how to publish a video to YouTube. And while sometimes I do just write out these instructions, most of the time I actually record my screen using a tool called Loom. Now Loom is sponsoring this video, but I reached out to them directly and asked to work with them because Loom is seriously one of my favorite tools and I use it almost every single day. Loom lets you almost instantly start recording your screen, your camera, or both either on their desktop apps in the browser using their extension or on your mobile device. It is asynchronous video messaging for work. And I absolutely love the fact that anytime I need to document something or send a message to my team showing them how to do something, I can near instantly record my screen and then the link to the video is automatically put on my clipboard. So I can just paste it into our messaging app and they see it right away. They also have some other cool features like automatic transcriptions and even a button to remove filler words like um and ah and lots of words that I probably used in this video. Like I said, my team and I use this every single day. They have 14 million other users. And if you would like to give it a try as well, the team over at Loom is currently offering my audience a 14 day free trial of their business plan with all these cool features. Just click the link in the description down below or the one on screen right here to get started. If you enjoyed this video, a like for the algorithm would be very much appreciated. And you may also want to check out this video right here on seven books I think everyone should read in their 20s. Or maybe this video over here on how to stop overthinking everything. Check one of those two out if you want something more to watch. Thanks as always for watching and I will see you in the next one.